Today's question is, why do I have light bulbs in my speakers? Now, I'm not talking about those party speakers with multicolored lights that blink to the music. Uh, I'm talking about your pro sound speakers, maybe your home hi-fi speakers. And you've noticed that when you get things cranked up pretty high, every once in a while you might see a little flash of light coming from inside of the box. Or maybe you've had the experience where the high-frequency drivers have failed, and the cure was to go inside the box and replace a light bulb. So what's the purpose of a light bulb in the speakers? Well, obviously, it's a protection mechanism to protect the high-frequency drivers from overload. And it's an inexpensive and relatively clever way of doing it. Now, there are different types of protection mechanisms, and I don't think that any of them offer absolute guaranteed protection against blowing out your drivers, but they can provide a margin of safety. Let's talk about some of the different methods that are commonly used. Some boxes, particularly those who are aimed at the audiophile market, have no protection circuitry at all in them. A lot of audiophiles would say that putting any kind of protection circuitry in the signal path doesn't help the audio quality. And they don't like the sound of fuses and such, and so ideally for them, they just want a straight wire from the amplifier to the driver for the very best sound quality. And of course, in that case, the onus is on you not to drive things too hard and blow stuff up. We'll also find fuses and circuit breakers commonly used. And so if the level gets too high, the fuse fails, opens up the circuit, and prevents any more energy from reaching the high-frequency drivers. And hopefully, the fuse will fail before the driver does. And so you can replace an inexpensive fuse rather than an expensive driver. Now, the downside with those is that if you do trigger that protection device, well, you have to go in and replace the fuse or at least go up to the box and reset the circuit breaker in order to get operation happening again. Uh, there are some self-resetting circuit breaker type circuits as well, of course. Some boxes have some fairly sophisticated circuitry in them. For example, I've got a set of PA boxes that on the crossover actually has a little power supply. And so it takes audio signal in and that audio voltage is rectified to a DC voltage, which then drives some transistors that make up a little comparator circuit and actually watch the voltage level that goes to the tweeter. And if it exceeds a certain threshold, that circuit then trips a relay to disconnect the tweeters from the signal source. And then once the audio level returns back to a reasonable point, the relay is uh, once again triggered to turn the tweeters, the high frequency drivers, back on. And the good thing about that is that it's a fairly fast acting circuit. And it's fairly accurate as to when it comes in and activates. But a real common method that we'll see is the use of a light bulb in line with the high frequency drivers. And it's kind of a clever deal. Let's talk about electronics just for a quick moment. So what we have is your tweeter and a light bulb in series with it. And that's basically all the circuit is. And let's simplify this a little bit by just considering the driver and the light bulb as resistors. They, they resist some electricity. So that would just be like so. Two resistors in series. Let's say your driver is 8 ohms. And let's say this top resistor was also 8 ohms. So if we put 10 volts of signal across this, that 10 volts will get evenly divided 
across these two loads and each one will see 5 volts. Now on the other hand, if the stop resistor was 0 ohms, no resistance at all, basically it's just a piece of wire. Well, in that case, all of the energy of those 10 volts will get applied to this resistor, to your driver. So you'd get 10 volts on the driver and 0 volts across this piece of wire, this resistor up on top. And conversely, if uh, the resistor on top was much higher resistance than the one below, let's say it's 80 ohms, as opposed to 8 ohms on the driver, well, then the, all of the lion's share of the voltage is going to be up here, and very little will be down here. So the reason we use a light bulb is because of an interesting resistance characteristic of light bulbs. And that is, voltage versus resistance. When the voltage is very low on a light bulb, and the light bulb is cold and it's not turned on, it has very little resistance. It looks almost like a piece of wire. It doesn't uh, impede the circuit flow at all. It almost acts like it's not even in the circuit. But as the voltage rises, the light bulb begins to heat up and turn on. And as it does, the resistance rises until the light bulb is turned on and then it sits at some higher point. So what happens is that as you turn up the audio more and more and more, the light bulb starts to get turned on. And as the light bulb turns on, its resistance begins to slowly rise up until its resistance is higher than the tweeter or the high frequency driver that it's protecting. And so all of the voltage, well, a good share of the voltage, will go across the light bulb and not across your driver. So the result of that is that as you turn the audio level up higher and higher into the area where it's dangerously loud for the high frequency drivers, the light bulb will start to engage and it will slowly turn down the level that's coming through the high frequency driver. And so you may hear the high frequencies of the box getting a little bit muted or turned down. It's kind of like somebody just turning the trouble control down. And then as you turn down the overall level and let the box come down in power, well, the light bulb then doesn't have as much energy going into it. It starts to cool off. It starts to turn off. And it automatically gently restores the high frequency operation. And so the light bulb kind of automatically moderates the amount of power going through the high frequency drivers in a nice, gentle, smooth way that is probably not even perceptible to most of the people listening to the box. And of course the light bulb also acts somewhat like a fuse where if you hit the box with an extremely high pulse of energy, well hopefully the light bulb burns out and saves the high frequency drivers. And so that's why we use light bulbs inside of loudspeaker systems. Now of course it's important for us to choose the correct light bulb with the appropriate wattage and voltage specifications to protect the high frequency driver it's attached to. We want to make sure that the light bulb turns on soon enough to protect whatever driver it's um, before. I found in a lot of PA system boxes where the high frequency driver is good for 50 or 80 watts, something like a automotive 1156 bulb is a common choice. But different bulbs will be used depending upon what kind of driver and how much power that driver is able to handle. So that's why we use light bulbs. I hope that was interesting for you. And uh, it's a really inexpensive way that you can offer some degree of protection against blowing out high frequency drivers. And like I mentioned earlier, these things are 
most effective against situations where it's an overall power level that's getting a little too hot as opposed to a quick transient because those things can be hard to protect against. Uh, for protection against quick transients, usually I think the best approach is to put a limiter before the amplifier because the audio limiter can act very quickly whereas something like a light bulb has got a slower response time. I hope you found that interesting, useful. If you do, I'd appreciate it if you'd take a moment to subscribe to the channel so you can catch future content. And if you do choose to subscribe, I'd advise that you also hit that bell icon for notifications of future videos. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on another episode.